In this video, we will explore nine different ways to automate the detection of support and resistance levels using Python. You can find the code for each method on our GitHub page. The link to the repository is provided in the description below. Let's begin by understanding what support and resistance levels are. Support refers to a price level where buying pressure typically exceeds selling pressure, causing the price to halt its decline. On the other hand, resistance is a price level where selling pressure often surpasses buying pressure, causing the price to halt its ascent. Both support and resistance levels play a vital role in trading as they assist traders in making informed decisions. These levels provide insights into potential entry and exit points, aid in identifying trend reversals, and help determine optimal stop loss and take profit levels. Now let's dive into the methods. The first four methods we will discuss are based on pivot points. Pivot points are technical indicators used to determine potential support and resistance levels based on previous price action. Here are the four methods for calculating pivot points. Traditional pivot points use the high, low, and closing prices of the previous period to calculate support and resistance levels. The Fibonacci method utilizes ratios to calculate support and resistance levels. These ratios are derived from the Fibonacci sequence and are believed to have significant relevance in financial markets. The DM method combines DeMarc's range projection concept with pivot points to identify potential support and resistance levels. The Camarilla method calculates support and resistance levels based on a predefined formula that takes into account the previous day's range. Now let's take a look at the code. If you want to calculate support and resistance using any of the above methods, you can specify the corresponding method parameter in the find levels function. Here are the results for each of the different pivot point methods. The next two methods we will discuss are based on clustering algorithms, specifically k-means and agglomerative clustering. While we won't go into detail about these methods, clustering in statistics is a technique used to group similar data points based on their characteristics. To obtain results using these clustering algorithms, you can specify k-means or agglomerative as the method parameter in the find levels function. Here are the results for these two clustering algorithms. The following two methods utilize the kernel density approach to determine support and resistance levels. Kernel density refers to a non-parametric technique used to estimate the probability density function of a random variable. In the find levels functions, set the method parameter to density underscore 1 or density underscore 2 to get the results. Here are the results for the methods. Lastly, we have a method that utilizes fractals. A fractal is a candlestick pattern formed by five candles. The third candle in the pattern has the lowest low price, while the previous candles exhibit decreasing lows and the subsequent candles show increasing lows. To obtain results using the fractal method, you can set the method parameter to fractal in the find levels function. In the code repository, we have linked to where we saw these methods. There, you will find more in-depth information about a method or methods that look promising for your analysis. If you are interested in automating chart patterns, here are two videos you should watch. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.